Pivot tables are very powerful tool in Excel. If you want to quickly visualize your data, if you want to generate charts, reports, dashboards, or if you want to do some data visualization, then pivot tables are your best friend. Don't be afraid of this name because I'm going to make it very, very simple and very, very interesting for you. With some basic features of pivot table, I will also cover some interesting features which you might have never ever used. And by the end of this video, I'll also cover how you can get a slicer, a button type of slicer, which will uh, filter out your data. And the best part is it will be applicable to all the pivot tables that you have for your data set. So let's get started. Let's see what all I have here. I have products, stores, country, customers and sale. We are going to solve two questions here. One is who all are those customers who are contributing more to the sales percentage? The second is which of the products generates more sales? You can get the answer of these two questions using the pivot tables. But before we insert a pivot table, make sure that your data is clean and organized in a proper format. Now how you can clean your data in Excel? I have a separate video on this and I have covered some very useful data cleaning techniques in Excel. I personally suggest you to watch that video and invest 10 minutes of your time to see how you can clean your data in Excel. You can get the link uh, at the top from here or in the description. Now moving on to the pivot table. Uh, for pivot tables, check these four pointers first. One is each column should have an header. The second is there should be no blank cells, blank rows or blank columns. There should not be any total or subtotal rows within your data. And you should not have any extra spaces. You can get rid of them using clean and trim function which is again explained in the data cleaning techniques video. Now moving on. Uh, uh, Let's assume that I have checked everything in my data and my data is completely organized. So to insert a pivot table, go to insert. Now you can see here in the range, the range is hard coded from A1 to E10. Now if in the future I add more rows to my data, it won't get updated. It will take only this data. So to avoid this issue, what we will do is before inserting a pivot table, we will convert a data set into official Excel table. So the advantage of this is whenever we have new data added, the pivot tables will automatically reflect that on refreshing the pivot tables. So to convert a data into official Excel table, press Ctrl and T shortcut key from your keyboard and then click on OK. If you do not like this default look of the tables, you can go here table design and in the table style choose none. You can also give a name to your table from the top left hand side. You can see table name here. Give it a relevant name. Uh, I am giving it my uh, data and press enter. Now you have two options to insert the pivot table. Uh, you can uh, select this summarize from the pivot table or you can choose the previous uh, option go to insert and then pivot tables i also want to show you even an easier way to insert the pivot table so which is when you click on this recommended pivot tables now these uh, pivot tables are very smart they can give you directly what you are looking for or they can give you an idea to get a faster start if you remember uh, our first question is who all are those customers who are contributing towards the sale let's see if any one of the option is giving me that yes this one so you can choose this one and click on it you will get a pivot table in a new sheet so uh, let's move on to the right hand panel of the pivot table first these are known as the pivot table fields at the top you have the headers of your column that's why it was important and mandatory to have all the headers for all your columns uh, at the bottom you have four sections one is filter so if you want to filter out your data bases on certain options in a column for example if i want to filter my data bases on store column i can drag this and drop it here you can simply drag and drop the attributes in the pivot table. 
so you can see in your pivot table you have the filter option at the top from where you can filter out your data bases on the stores store a b or c let me take it out the second section is the column if you don't want filters for your store column you can add it in the columns section just drag and drop here and you can see that you have the stores option store a b and c in your column and by default the pivot adds grand total for your rows and col column both at the end wherever your columns are ending it will add a grand uh, total to your columns and rows your third section is rows it is same as you have for the columns uh, here i have customers in the rows the fourth section is very uh, interesting the beauty of pivot tables is that it has predefined formulas to add count average or many more so you do not need to write these formulas so uh, here uh, we have a sum of sales if you want to change this sum to count uh, if you want to change this calculation you can go to these value settings and then from here you can change and click on ok the other option to change it is right clicking from your pivot table so right click here is your friend and then from here go to value settings and then you can change your sum to uh, count or average whatever you want and then click on ok uh, coming back to the uh, pivot field uh, if you don't uh, want this layout we have headers at the top and these four sections at the bottom you can change it from this gear icon uh, in this layout you have headers on the left and these four sections on the right i prefer the first one if you accidentally deleted this field list you can get it back from go to analyze and then uh, select field list Let's take an example of a multi-layer. So uh, I want to add products under each customer. So drag this product header into the section rows. You will get the products under each customer. Uh, for multi-layer, I prefer different view. So go to this option and click here. You will get uh, your products in a separate column uh, from your customer. And if you want to fill the gaps here, you can go to design and select the option repeat all item labels now here you have um, option to expand and collapse your data from these small buttons if you don't want these buttons go to analyze and here you can click on this plus minus sign so these small buttons will will go away Let's bring back the data that we had initially. Now we are going to make few changes in the pivot table. So let's remove this sum off from the header name. Uh, it don't look good. So make sure the name you are putting here should not match with the name of headers. If you want the same name, put a space before or after the name. For grand total, let's change it to total. You can also update the design of your pivot table by selecting different styles of your choice. One more important thing I want to do here is sorting this, these numbers from largest to smallest. Now if you remember our problem statement, we are looking for the top customers and how much percentage they are contributing to our sale. So we need percentage here. So we are going to put this sales value again in this section, this fourth section. And then from here, we will change it to the percentage of grand total. You can also try other things that you have here and play around it. Until you won't practice, you won't learn it. You can change again the header from uh, this to sales percentage. Let's make another report. My way of doing is just copy this pivot table and paste it here. This is a quick way of starting another pivot table with same data set. So here we will solve our second problem statement, which products are generating more sales. So we will drag and drop the attributes as per our requirement like this. 
Now let's cover one more interesting part how we can get the slicers for our pivot table. So in the headers for which you want to add the slicer, right click, check this add as slicer and these buttons will be available for you to filter out your data. So when you click on these buttons, your data will get changes in the pivot table. You can update the layout of your slices from here like this. Now if you want to apply this slice to another pivot table, then go to that pivot table, click on it, pivot analysis, filter connection and check this box, click on OK. So this will be applicable to both the pivot tables. So whenever you are clicking on the button, you can see that your data is filtering out in both the pivot tables. Now we are left with one last thing to check if uh, our pivot table are updating automatically on adding new rows to our data. So let's add some rows in our data I am adding here and after this we will go to our pivot table right click on any pivot table and check this option refresh you will see that your new rows the data of your new rows are now updated automatically in your pivot tables now you understand what is a pivot table and how we can use it if i ask you what are the advantages of pivot table then what do you think it would be Number one is it gives a quick insight to your data. Number two, it is very user friendly. You can just drag and drop the attributes. Number three is it helps in your data visualization. And number four is you don't need to write any basic formulas like sum, count, min, max. They all are predefined in the pivot tables. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. If you want, you can hit the bell icon also. Please practice whatever you have learned in this video, otherwise you will forget. See you in the next video. Take care.